FFH recaps tell the summarized story of the different campaigns told throughout Forsyth Fantasy Hour. This recap focuses on episodes 5 through 13 of Hilltopper and Pilgrim, Season 2. As Emmy and Jack return from their mission in Horseshoe Pass, departed Guardian leader Quentin Shortmarsh recalls his time as a Guardian. In the departed Guardian's Silver Age, Quentin Shortmarsh, Nerissa Holmes, Sia Flightfeather, and the original Jack Pilgrim were the Guardian's most esteemed heroes. Together, they worked as a cohesive unit, vanquishing their foes and stopping all forms of evil. Nerissa was a prolific scientist who always sought out to preserve her life and seek immortality. She underwent experiments on herself, as well as Quentin, he had volunteered to help her, and the two of them were able to halt their age and live on for longer than any water genasi or human should. Over time, Quentin felt what they were doing was wrong, and never let any of the other Guardians know. He eventually had a falling out with Nerissa once he found that since he stopped Nerissa's test on him, she moved on to a new subject, his young ward, Sia Flightfeather. Quentin never learned what Nerissa was having Sia do, but he knew that there was no stopping Nerissa once she had put her mind to something and saw a goal in sight. Back in the current age, Emmy, Jack, and Edward arrive at the Burrow, the hidden base of the departed Guardians. They report on the success of their mission in Horseshoe Pass and catch up with the rest of the team's current events. As time passed, Emmy and Jack have each had something on their mind. Emmy wished to know the status of her friends affected by the Primordial Forge back in Season 1, and the current condition of Elliot Greenkid, her dragonborn childhood friend and ex-Insect Glaive member. While Jack wishes to see the original Departed Guardian base, where his successor and mentor Jack Paladin Pilgrim lived and fell in battle. After previous attempts of sneaking outside of the burrow and leaving for Quarter Keep, the town where the original base lies, Quentin told Jack, that it was time for him to make a journey there. Together, Quentin, Jack, and the other urchins, Jack's immediate family, left for a family trip to Quarter Keep, while Emmy, Edward, and Droopy, the goblin child, stayed in the burrow. Knowing that the others would be gone for a few days, Emmy requested that she and Edward made their own family trip to Sixport to check on Elliot. As the hilltoppers left, Droopy, the goblin child, stayed behind to watch the base and had resources to protect himself if anything went wrong. Now, Emmy and Jack's trips happen simultaneously, but we'll tell Emmy's adventure first for the sake of the recap. Edward knew of a trio who had helped adventurers travel between locations and cities in hopes their service would help Emmy and himself reach Sixport faster than traveling on horseback. In the small outpost of Crossing, Emmy met with Burgle Timbers, Banquo the Barbarous, and the dragonborn witch, Bog, who would help them travel to Sixport. The traveling trio was happy to help Emmy arrive at Sixport, as they wished to meet with their former compatriot, who, last they heard, was in the city. Their missing friend was Grey Orange, Emmy's friend, Jack's brother, and the former vigilante known as Totem. Emmy kept her knowledge of Grey hidden from the traveling trio, but agreed to get Grey to them. Creating a teleportation spell, they traveled to Sixport and headed to the headquarters of District 6, the defense against magical crime where Elliot and Gray were last seen with. As Emmy entered the building, she finds a defense attorney who helps her locate her friends. The attorney is a human woman named Roxanne Moxie Pohl, who works in partnership with District 6 and is the wife to director of District 6, Maxine Moxie. Roxanne reunites Emmy with Elliot and Emmy learns that he is no longer brainwashed. Due to the research District 6 has done, and with their knowledge of big magic and the villainous Jairus Click scientific process, the agency had been able to cure him and many other souls affected by the Wellforge's chaos, with Grey Orange heading up this department in investigation. Elliot assures Emmy that he'll be reunited with her soon, but first he needs to finish some medical tests before he's released. Emmy, now feeling at ease, takes Grey and Roxanne outside of the agency to meet with the traveling trio. However, when they arrive outside, a magical rift opens and small creatures take the three of them away. Jack and the departed guardian near the end of their trek 
as Quarter Keep is now along the horizon. The party enters the town and the group splits to mingle in the area. As the guardians walk around, Jack notices a small rift outside of the town. It hovers over the ground and it's spilling a light, multicolored mist. When Jack gets closer, the breach begins pulling him in. But before he's swept away, Ophelia, his sister, pulls him to safety. As the two comment about the strangeness of this event, Ophelia reveals some truth to Jack. Ophelia is much older than Jack had thought, and she is a part of a Gowie royal family named House Brightwood. The Gowie, a royal bloodline who many of No Wishing's leaders are a part of, Brightwood was one of the wealthiest Gowie families in No Wishing, until one day, their fortune vanished. In the shift in power, House Stahl took over as the most affluent house and gained severe notoriety, and the deflation of the Brightwoods is what caused Ophelia to seek out the truth and lead her to the urchins. Many of her family believe that the Brightwoods' loss in fortune was actually a coup to get current king of no wishing, Lord Orion Stahl, in power. But this was never proven. Time passes as the two return to the party, and everyone starts exploring the ruins of the departed Guardian base, mostly to see if anybody had moved in since the Guardians left. Quentin and Jack check the dorms of the old grounds, and during their search, they stumble upon a room that used to house Nerissa Holmes. The odd thing about Nerissa's lodging was it was the only one to have been disturbed in the last two years. Quentin reveals to Jack Nerissa's history as a guardian and as a scientist. He explains Nerissa's interest in preserving life, her many experiments on herself, and her experiments on Quentin. They continue to investigate, finding notes on a creature who harvested and controlled the minds of souls, and then they found a lab where Nerissa would conduct her experiments in private. And one of these experiments was a large broken tube that seemed to have housed a beast, with the only clue being about an elder brain named Rekt. Before Jack can react to any of this, another rift opens in front of him as tiny hands rip him away from Quarter Keep and away from this world. Jack awakes in a stone cell with Quentin, and as he scans the room, he sees Emmy too, next to Grey Orange and a human he doesn't know. We know her as Roxanne. Back in Quarter Keep, Ophelia hears a commotion coming from the dorms. As she investigates, she calls out to her team, to no answer. When she sees Nerissa's room, all that remains is the colored mist, with her family nowhere in sight. Now in a new world, and seemingly in a prison cell, Emmy, Jack, and their compatriots meet their captor, Zigabeth, the proclaimed king of Nysen and lord of the Scoria, a race of humans with a rough, volcanic rock-like skin. Zigabeth claims that he had captured the Guardians to prevent a long-standing prophecy of his sworn enemies, the Pumice, a race of tiny, dinosaur-slash-rodent-like creatures with soft felt-like skin. Foretold in the Pomice's history, the departed guardians will lead them out of Nysen and towards salvation. But only the purest of heart could do so. Zigabeth, believing that he has stolen all of the departed guardians, mistaking Grey and Roxanne for the other members, Zigabeth leaves the party, letting his band of mind-controlled Pomice to watch our heroes. As Zigabeth's next step is to seek out and capture the rest of the Pomice before the prophecy can come true. As the party looks around for a way to leave, a small band of creatures come out of the wall, revealing a possible escape route. Jack takes one of these mechanical creatures and programs him to speak, thus becoming the party's guide through the world. One of Zigabeth's minions catches wind of the party's plan, causing a rushed escape for everybody. The minion, who is a mind-controlled pomice named Cerulean, is then captured by the party and everyone makes their way out of the cell, heading into the unknown world of Nysen. Emmy, Jack... Quentin, Grey Orange, and Roxanne are led by their guide, Will Free, through the world. Nysen is a colorful but bewildering place, as magic is abundant and the creatures are unlike anything seen on No Wishing. Nysen's prevalent magic is so powerful that it actually spills out of this world and into No Wishing, thus causing many people's opportunity in No Wishing to become magically capable. The connection between No Wishing and Nysen is so strong that Zigabeth's forces could capture Emmy, Jack, and the others by exploiting the plane's rifts. As everyone trekked through Nysen looking for a way home, they meet another Pomice, one who had yet to be controlled by Lord Zigabeth. The creature was named Blue and took everybody to the Pomice village 
to explain how they could save the Pumice and get home. Long ago, the Pumice met three heroes, Luca Wilkin, Archimedes the Wise, and Orion Stahl, as they were the three original Departed Guardian members. As Departed Guardians, they were traveling the lands, searching and studying the Wellforges. As the Guardians went back to their home of Noishing, they promised the Pumice that the Guardians would one day return and save them. Blue tells the party that they need to reach the Aura Mountains and wait for Guardian Day, the day where natural magic is so powerful that it can send anyone through the rift and back to Noishing. Also, Guardian Day so happens to be today, giving our party only one shot to get home. Everyone was on board with the plan. Apart from Quentin, he felt that his life has only led to getting people he cares about hurt, and he isn't sure of how much of this prophecy to believe. As Emmy and Quentin talk, during this time, Grey, Orange, and Jack talk. Grey is upset to discover that Jack went to Quarter Keep with the other urchins, but never included him. Much like Quentin, Grey also feels responsible for his friend's mistakes, worried that Emmy, Jack, or even the little Pumice might get hurt because of something Grey does wrong. After a heart-to-heart, our heroes and the Pumice prepare to leave, when Zigabeth and his forces attack the village. Using the captured minion Cerulean, they could locate the final group of Pumice, and Zigabeth and his right-hand man, the Advisor, an ominous Mind Flayer, a powerful octopus humanoid wizard, struck with full force. Giving time for the Pumice to escape, Roxanne and Grey took the creatures to safety outside of town. Emmy, Jack, and Quentin stayed behind to fight Zigabeth's forces. Once defeated, and the advisor and Zigabeth nowhere to be seen, the Guardians left to meet with their friends. They took a route through an old museum in the Pumice's town that celebrated the departed Guardians' history. This museum housed information on all the Guardians, from the Golden Age to the Current Age, confirming the Pumice's prophecy, along with revealing that Quentin Shortmarsh became a Guardian due to his parents' history as members. Surprised by all of the secrets withheld from Emmy and Jack, they confronted Quentin. He explained his family wanted to keep secrets, only letting the other members of the Guardians know important information when they needed to know it. And they trained him to do the same. Seeing how many of these secrets has caused more conflict, it became clear to Quentin that the departed Guardian's old ways were gone and useless. To have the Guardians succeed, they need to break away from these traditions and create something that works for the modern day. Before they left, Emmy and Jack found a book depicting the prophesied Guardian Pure of Heart, who happened to be Droopy, the Goblin Child, who Emmy suspected all along. Once out of the Pumice Village, Emmy, Jack, and Quentin found a creature from the woods dragging a coffin. This creature was the living suit of armor and Jack and Emmy's former enemy, Zert, the Burnt Knight. Everyone was on edge and became defensive. Strangely, Zert was much more passive than they ever were before. They were pleading with the Guardians to help them take the coffin to the Aura Mountains. Quentin did not want to help them, knowing how he had trusted the wrong people in the past. Jack and Emmy, on the other hand, were more sympathetic, seeing that Zert was in apparent disarray. As things escalated, the coffin was open, revealing the body of a very dead Nerissa Holmes. With more questions rising, the party decided that Zert was not of any threat, but to be kept at arm's length, and kept them along as they headed to the mountains. The party then caught up with Roxanne and Grey, finding them battered and bruised. Roxanne and Grey explained that Zigabeth got to them and stole all the Pumice back. Luckily, he was taking them back to his castle, which is at the Aura Mountains base. And he healed her friends and treated their wounds, and Roxanne translated some of Zert's message, as Zert could not speak in their current form. Zert knew that they were all enemies in the past, but once again pleaded that the Guardians must get them to the Aura Mountains. Zert also promises to help them in the Guardians' quest to return home, and promises not to interfere in that aspect. As hours passed and travel continued, Zert and Emmy shared a dialogue. Zert requested for Emmy to break a part of their helm, so that they could speak once again. Reluctantly, Emmy agreed and gave Zert the ability to speak and further their goal, though Emmy was unaware of that detail. With Zigabet's castle in sight, Jack and Grey scouted ahead to look for danger. The two were surprised to find the stronghold empty. Once the rest of the team entered in, voices echoed from the basement. Zigabet was conducting his final plan to enslave the Pumice and the rest of the departed guardians. 
One by one, the advisor brainwashed Blue, Astrid, Nyx, and the other Pumice, with Droopy next in line. All of this was possible with the powers of the Wellforge of Control, the source of energy Nerissa Home sought, and the Wellforge the original Guardians came to study. With all of their might, our heroes stepped into battle with Zigabes forces. Quickly, they were overwhelmed and outmatched by his strength when Zert conducted their final plan. Underneath their helm, the one which Emmy broke, was a magical syringe holding the power, the consciousness, and the life force of Nerissa Holmes. As even in death, her final experiment was to be reborn in a new body. Knowing that the Wellforge of Control was an ancient holy ground for the Elder Brain, a Mind Flayer's leader, she sent Zert, her secret experiment, to Nysen to find and inject a Mind Flayer's body, which Zert did to the advisor. As the advisor's body morphed and twisted, Nerissa Holmes was reborn. As promised, Nerissa used her newfound powers to free Zert from their fusion form, thus revealing that Zert was Quentin's old friend Sea of Whitefeather and the Wellforge of Control personified all along. Sia was distraught by the deception to her friends, which they in turn reassured her, promising her to bring her home with them and never taking anything personally. Nerissa commanded for the Wellforge to destroy everyone as she waited for the rift to open and send her back to Noishing. All seemed lost, until Droopy spoke up. Seeing all of the control, the years of deception and planning, all of this confused him. Droopy didn't understand why someone would hold such a desire to control people, when he knows that merely talking and being caring to others is the best way to treat people. Droopy's plea warmed Zigabeth's heart, and he saw the error of his ways. Zigabeth wished to make amends to the Guardians and the Pumice, to which they agreed. This show of affection didn't warm Nerissa's heart, however, as she was still looking out only for herself. Nevertheless, Droopy's speech gave Jack the opportunity to surprise the Wellforge and shut it down for good. Just then, the rift began to open, and knowing they only had a small window of time, everyone rushed through to their homeworld. Emmy, Jack, and Gray made sure that they were the last ones to leave and stood face to face with Nerissa Holmes. An argument ensued, and Nerissa was determined to go home or to trap the three of them in Nysen with her forever. Emmy and Jack prepared for the worst when Gray made a choice for them. Knowing that Gray had made mistakes and never could find a place for him in this world, he knew that one action could make everything worth it. He unsheathed Jack's blade and plunged it into Nerissa. He then shoved Jack and Emmy through the rift, ensuring that they would be home safe, and Nerissa would no longer become a threat to them. Don't live in the past, live in the moment, and look towards the future. I love you. Those were Grey Orange's final words he said as he trapped himself in another world. Forever. Thanks for listening to Forsyth Fantasy Hour, a podcast created by Scott D. Forsyth, hosted by Tristan Lagan, Vicky Forsyth, and Scott D. Forsyth, with Ben Looper. Intro and outro theme composed and performed by Popsky. Logo and art created by Bready Boop, with additional music and sound effects provided by Audioblocks. Until the next episode, stay safe, adventurers. <laughs>